I tell you, when you come to come, you don't want to miss a service here at Bible Baptist Church. You really don't. If you do, you miss a blessing. I just tell you right now, every service, you he was metaflighted to take, I think you were taken to OU Medical Center where I visited him in the hospital there with his wife. And I'm telling you, it was, it was just in God's hands about Dean's life. And uh, he doesn't even recall. There's, a, there's some time that you just don't even remember what happened. But he's here today, a trophy of God's grace and mercy and love. And he's come back for the first time since November. He was in the hospital three months. And they flew him. I think you were even, did you go to Colorado for an extended stay for uh, rehab and different things like that? But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm saying today, Thank the Lord for Dean Haynes. Dean, would you stand, please? And Dean is a blessing. Give him a hand. Amen. First, first time back. I'm telling you, that, that, is, that just is a blessing. I'm telling you, answered prayer. And I'm so thankful for that. I'll tell you another answered prayer. I see Steve and Marla. Of course, Sydney was up here on the platform singing. Your son's back in the U.S. Ben Marshburn is back in the United States after, after yes, after, yes, amen. We thank the Lord. Serving our nation overseas, uh, literally in a war, and uh, with all of our other service men and women, and come back to the U.S. And I know that we have one happy family right here. I don't know where he's at today. He's, he's, in, he's stationed somewhere, Fort Hood. But I look forward to the day that he can be back in service and we can, we, ben, ben always, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't mind if I get him up in front of everybody and we'll, we'll thank the Lord for his being here when he comes. But we're thankful for that. Other, the, the only other thing I'd ask is, uh, uh, I, I don't know a lot of how to, how to act or react, but uh, the only thing I can do is just ask you to, uh, is just to pray for me. My wife's in Nicaragua. And uh, I've been given advice. I've been given advice. She comes back on Friday. So I've got till Friday morning actually to get the house clean and, and to do my laundry to prove it can be done. I'm just, that I actually can do those things. But I, I might, Mom, are, are you maybe you'll come over maybe you'll you live right next door to me mom and i do have daughters that are in the in chickasha and they're here they're listening right now they if they really love their daddy they could come over and do things like that too i'm pretty sure and say again please uh that's what trent's for Hayes is pointing at me right now. That's my grandson. He's got the he's got that do going right there. But uh, I do have I do have backup available. But just just remember in prayer. I just thought I'd ask for that. And, you know. How many of you uh, lost an hour of sleep? And you know right now. The truth of the matter is, it's only 10.15. So I actually, actually could preach. I mean, just because you have a body clock, you have a body, your body's not used to 11.15, your body's used to 10.15. So I mean, it's like you've come to Sunday school. And then we'll have church service. So if I actually take two hours, it shouldn't bother anybody at all. I don't, uh, thank you, Kim. You're the only one in the room that actually. No, we'll, we'll. You know the the song, "Goodbye World, Goodbye." That's what we're preaching about today. Open your Bibles, First Thessalonians chapter four, beginning in verse thirteen. Man, the Lord's been stirring my heart about this very subject, 
And when I, I, I got to praying about and looking at and thinking about this more and more, the Lord gave me permission, and, and I love the green light from the Holy Spirit about, uh, about what I'm to preach. So there's a reason why we're going to preach this message today. And I pray for anyone in the room that uh, is a new and growing Christian. See, I remember a day when my pastor, when I first truly turned my heart to the Lord at eight, 18 years of age here at Bible Baptist Church, I'll never forget Brother Jesse Simon preaching a message on the rapture. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I can, David and Ann were probably there that day, and uh, I, I, I promise you, I could not. It was the first time I really opened my heart and ears to the, to the very subject of the catching away of the saints or the rapture. And he preached that morning, and I just, I just hung on every word. And I don't know that anybody in the room, I can't, I can't, I, I never will match uh, the, the, the preaching of, of Brother Jesse Simon. I, 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 hands down, he was a prince of preachers, I got to tell you. But, uh, but what I want to do today is just take this subject and let us look at it as, as if we had fresh eyes and you just ask the Lord to speak to your heart today. And so... And so, would, would you just look at these words, verse 13, beginning there. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. And I've often thought I ought to preach a message somehow. The Lord give me permission about ignorant brethren. Now, it doesn't say, doesn't want, don't want our sisters to be ignorant, just the brethren. I don't know what that's all about. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Concerning the, that didn't go very far, did it? Concerning them which are asleep. Now, the word asleep in the King James, that's those who have died. That you sorrow not even as others which have what? No hope. We're not going to listen at death. There's a difference. I've preached hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of funerals, and I've got to tell you, I rejoice anytime I know that a, that a child of God has entered into the very presence of God through, through death. And uh, I was called to the bedside of Sammy Morgan yesterday. Sammy is uh, over here in uh, Glen Haven uh, nursing home and, and Sammy used to sit right back over there and with his wife Lillian and, and uh, they actually r raised their, their children back in the 60s. They, their, their, their family goes all the way back to the 1960s. But uh, Brother Sammy's right over here and, and I talked to Lonnie and, and uh, according to what they know and what's going on, Sammy just has a few days left on this earth. In fact, Lonnie said, "I don't." They, they've told uh, they've told the family not not to expect more than a day or two. So, but that's up to God, right? But uh, I will tell you, he, he is he is on the launch pad, and I thrilled that Lonnie that Sammy actually spoke to me yesterday, and and uh, he told me he loved me, and I I just this man is so sweet so precious and uh, he's just a wonderful guy and so uh, I was I was so thankful I got to tell him bye and and tell him we love him uh, death death to the child of God is, is a home going okay so the, the, uh, when you read this some of you are sitting here you have how many of you got an investment over there already they're they're waiting on you some loved ones over there I do I do I've got a dad and a brother and uh, I've got other loved ones, Granny. <laughs> I, uh, I so I, I get warmed up just like you do when I think about what I'm missing out on over there. And so here's what though the Scripture says about us that are still here. Okay, that's what this really applies to, is giving us information that I am so thankful that Paul answered the questions of the Thessalonians and that the Holy Spirit of God led him to give us this information because. It does exactly what the last verse in verse 18 says, wherefore comfort one another with these words. Did you get that? What we're reading is to be comforting. What we're reading is to bring anyone that's stationed here on planet Earth, anyone that's still alive, any believer that's still here, and we've got loved ones over there, this brings comfort. Why? Because we're given this information. Okay, so let's look at it. Go to verse 14. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that's you and I who are saved. Say amen. I'm glad I have, I'm glad it's just so simple that, that we, we, have, we have Jesus Christ, God's only son, as the focus of our uh, belief. He is the one that we believe in, that we have faith in, that we rest our case with. And that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep or who have died in Jesus will God bring with him. For, we, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive remain uh, <clears throat> unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep or who have died. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And then we have the verse we just quoted a while ago. And everybody say it together. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Father, I'm praying now for uh, just, uh, just, just Lord, in, in, enlighten us and, and then open our, our eyes and our hearts uh, to something that, Lord, maybe we just never, never really saw before. Maybe something that that, Lord, we, we've rehearsed these verses and we think about this, but, Lord, maybe, maybe you just give a new blessing today. And, Lord, it, it just it never gets old. It never gets old. We're thankful that we have this again uh, to look at, and we're asking you to bless now in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Well, you know the, you know the title of the message, don't you? Huh? You sang it. Goodbye, world, goodbye. <laughs> Isn't that what the rapture is all about? Isn't that what, what, what this passage is all about? Telling this world goodbye. Now, the event of the rapture, what's, the, what's this thought of the rapture? The, it's the word rapture is not in the Bible. Actual word is not. But the definite thought is conveyed. Now, we, 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 look, at this, uh, we look at this thought uh, there in, in basically uh, that... that well, no, notice verse 15. It says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And what's going to happen? The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be what? What's the word? What's the, the phrase right there? Caught up together. Caught up. So there's your... There's your term that we use in our modern English translation, uh, just, just trans, uh, translating this, this thought of the word, the phrase caught up, it literally, we use the word rapture, so it means the same. When I say rapture, it may, that actual word may not, but the thought is conveyed, be, be assured of one thing, we're gonna be caught up. So if you'd like to say, I'm waiting for the catching the catching up. <laughs> I'm waiting for being, I'm waiting to be caught up. That's fine. It's still the same, the same thought that's being conveyed. We're, we're waiting. And, and, and listen to this. Before I finish this message, the rapture could take place. And everybody will say amen to that. I mean, we're going to get out of here before I fit. I was going to take that two hour. No, we're praying for the rapture today. How often you do that, huh? Man, I, I, I don't know. I, I just get a little bit excited about this, this uh, subject. I, I get a little bit, uh, I, get, I get to dreaming about it. I don't know about you. And I, my, my, did I tell you my wife wasn't, she's in Nicaragua. So I don't sleep good, but you know what? I got to praying and thinking about all, and I, I was up quite a bit. I really was. I, I, I just didn't sleep well, but, but I, I sure thought about this message, and I sure prayed about this message, and I sure kept asking the Lord to, uh, about this message, being caught up. And I, I do. I think about this a lot. I think about it during the day. I think about it uh, very, very much. And, and by the way, I think every believer probably does. I mean, no matter what the circumstances are, and, and how many times, and with some of you family members right here, that I have helped your families with 
the home going of your loved ones. I have been there with you. How often have, we, have I stood there with you? And some of you were probably numb or didn't, don't remember or see, because some things about those times you just don't remember. But more, I guarantee you, it's very often at a funeral service of a person that is saved and my concluding remarks at the, at the graveside, many times I use this text right here. This is what I use because it concludes with that thought of comfort. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But many, many of you, maybe, maybe you do remember me saying these words at your loved one's graveside. By the way, those, we, we, we must understand this, right? Death is not the end. Okay, it's not. Boy, I, I'm telling you, for every child of God in this room, death has been defeated. Death has been abolished. Death has been, uh, the victory over death has been won by Jesus Christ. And so, everybody in this room is in a temporary clay jar. You are. You, you came in this room in a temporary clay jar. That's what I like to call it. Just, that's all it is. It's just a house for our soul and spirit. And the only thing I'm telling you is we're waiting on one of two events. Everybody in this room that is saved, now let me just say this, for everybody that's saved, we are waiting on one of two events. What are they? Either death or the rapture. Either death or the catching away. Now, our days are what? The scripture says they're numbered. Kim Hayes, his days are numbered. Yeah. I, I'm not going to, I'm telling you, I'm not going to outlive my days that God has assigned me on this earth. I won't, I won't be here one minute longer than he wants me to be, and I'm not going to be here one minute less than he wants me to be. It's going to be right on schedule, right on time when he calls me home. Amen. And for you too. Now, let's just say this. When you come to these thoughts, I, I, I like to just go through this, and, and let's just pick up on some thoughts. And, and so first of all, that, that word, uh, when we use the word rapture, it means to caught up, it means to seize or to carry off. Uh, first thing I look at is this, this rapture or this being caught up is a sure event. <coughs> as sure as I'm standing here, as sure as you're seated there, as sure as we're in this room, I can promise you one thing, the rapture is a sure event. <laughs> How do we know that? Well, it's we, we've got this, don't we? <laughs> we've got this scripture. And so notice that we have the assurity of the word of God itself in verse 15. Notice this. For this we say unto you, how? How do I stand here and have the, the absolute assurance I'm standing on solid ground, biblical ground, spiritual truth, is because why? Because, it's, because first of all, this is God's word. This, this is God's word. Not mine, not yours, no. God's word. So what do we have? For this we say unto you, how is Paul saying he has this information? By the word of the Lord. By the word of the Lord. So everything he's going to talk about here is by the word of the Lord. The authority of life and death and future events all hinge on the person and work of Jesus Christ, plus nothing, minus nothing. It's all about him. So I, I see the focus is very sure because it's, it's about him. And, and we go back to Acts chapter 1 and verses 9 through 11. And what do we find there? And when he had spoken these things, Jesus actually bodily post-resurrection was with his disciples in his, listen to this, in his body that was 
resurrected from that grave, that tomb. And he's there, and he said, the Bible says, and when he had spoken these things, while they, be, while they beheld, he was what? The Lord was what? Look at that, taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight, and while they, the disciples, looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, by the way, everything's about up. Two men, angels, stood by them in white apparel, which also said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Look at this. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. He's going to come back the same way he left. You're getting this, aren't you? Everybody passing so far, right? Everybody's with me. Everybody's looking at it. You got it? Well, let's go to another proof text. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And this is very important because I use this also at grave sites. Okay, okay, so let's look at it. Now this I say, Paul's writing again. He says, now this I say, brethren. Look at this. That flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That body of flesh and bones and blood. That temporary clay jar, everybody has one. That body's not fit for heaven. You got that? Just not. This is fit for earth. And isn't it amazing how, how the body fit for earth is kind of, it, it's wearing out. Huh? Anybody walk in the room today with some aches or pains or Gripes or complaints or, you know, anybody? Anybody got some aches and pains? And I got me a little, yeah, all of us. And a person in this room, that, that life on planet Earth, I mean, you just hang on. There's, there's going to be something happen. A man that's born of woman is a few days that full of trouble. Just, just hang on. It's not a perfect place. But flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Now look, look at this. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. I'm going to reveal something, Paul said. We shall not all sleep, or I, 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 I don't mind that, that word sleep referring to death, because it's of the body. There's no such thing as soul sleep. There's no such thing as, w listen, when we, when death, when, when the day of death comes, when that moment we draw our last breath and this body happens, we leave that body behind. We exit the body. We leave a body of clay. It's not fit for heaven. So we, we, leave our, we leave our body on earth and our soul and spirit go to be with who? Immediately. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That ought to be comforting. Now, we, now we, look at this. Behold, I show you. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be, what's going to happen? Changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We'll come back to, we'll come back to uh, verse 52 in just a minute. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. See, there's going to be something take place because of, of our, we've got to get a body fit for heaven. We've got, we've got to get ready for heaven. Look at this. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, I told you a while ago, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now look at this. Therefore, my beloved brethren. Now he gets, we, we were in the heavens, right? We were, we were looking up. Oh boy, I can't wait to leave this world and say goodbye. I can't wait. Death of the rapture. But look what he says. He says, therefore, my beloved brethren, now here's what your assignment is while you're still here. Okay, everybody pay attention. We're all still here, and we're all, all the believers that are in this room, here's what we need to do. Be steadfast. Well, there is a purpose for your being here. Get involved. Make a hand. Huh? I mean, I mean, 
You're not just going to warm up a pew, are you, until you get to heaven. I mean, let's do something. Let, let's, let's make an effort. Let's, let's make ourselves available because we're in the Lord's army. We, there's, a, there's an advancement uh, of the word of God to people's hearts. We've got to get with it. Therefore, he said, unmovable. Don't, listen, don't. Don't give up ground. Always abounding. Go forward in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Get ready. You're going to meet your, you're going, you're going, to, you're going to see what you did on earth at the, at the Bema seat of Christ after your salvation. You're going to meet the Lord. Give an account of your works, whether good or bad. It's just, it, it's all going to happen. Now, uh, look, John 14, 1 through 3. I like these words of Jesus. You do too. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me, Jesus said. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. What does he say? What does he say in that tender, loving, shepherd way? I go to prepare a place for you. You've got a reservation. You've got a place. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I... Wow. Wow, I will come again and receive you into myself. That where I am, there you may be also. <laughs> wow. It's a sure event. There is, there, are, is anybody not convinced yet? <laughs> it's a sure event. It's, a, it's absolutely, you can nail this down in your heart. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. It's an important call. No. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. It's not only a sure event, it's an how you like this one? An instant event. Now, we, I told you we was going to go back to it. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52. It's an instant event. Everybody look at it. In a what? Hmm. So the, the catching away of the saints on this earth, I don't know when it's going to happen. How many of you really do kind of sense that we're kind of getting down to what they used to call short rows? Some of, you, some of you older folks in this room know about short, short rows, don't you? Getting down to the short rows. The, the, the rows are getting a lot shorter. Cotton, people used to pick cotton, and uh, they like the short rows. I guess. I'm kind of feeling around. I'm looking for people going, yeah, that's right. Short rows. In a moment, how many of you feel like it, it's really getting near? Huh? I do. May not be in my lifetime, but I can I dream a little bit with you that we might be closer than we think. And 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 what if what if this happens? What if this happens during our our lifetime? Wouldn't this be a great event? When I told you I dream about it, I, I can't I can't I can't help but envision what that's going to be like. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. By the way, they get a head start on us. The dead in Christ shall rise first. So, what's going to happen in an instant? Those disembodied souls and spirits that are with Jesus right now. Are you listening? They're okay. They're with the Lord. They, uh, don't. Uh, I, hope, I hope you get comfort from this. They're okay. We, we surely have that confidence that with the Lord, they're, they're okay. They're much better off than we are. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, they're not, on the, they're not on planet Earth having experienced this crazy world we're living in, right? They're in the perfect place of heaven with Jesus. Now, there's going to be something take place, so get this. They will come back with the Lord at this rapture or this catching away. We're here, they are there. They're more alive than they ever have been. Yeah. And they're there. <laughs> They're going to come, listen, in an instant. Did you get this? In an instant. I don't know how the Lord works all this out, but he told us in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. All right, he's going to do that. Brother Hayes, my loved one, we cremated. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. Everybody's going to go back to dust. Or if it's ashes or dust. I don't care. I don't know what happens to this body. It doesn't matter to me. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. I, I guarantee you, I've already asked uh, 
whether, listen, I don't know who, it, it, it doesn't matter to me who Shirley uses. I say the cheapest, so anyway, whether it's Larry or Charlie or Mark, I don't care. You think I care? I'll give, I'll, I'll give free advertisement for all three funeral homes here in town. They, do, they all do a good job. Okay, having said all that, I don't care what they do with this body. There ain't enough makeup you can put on to make it look any better than what it is right now. It, uh, it's going to be an ugly thing when you look at me in that casket. It just ain't. What can you do with it? Oh, I've heard people say, oh, he looks better than he ever had. <laughs> oh, they did a good job. I've heard that. You ever heard that? You ever? Oh, they did a good job. Well, what'd they do? I don't know. They could just, if they could just somehow take off some pounds, that'd help me right there. It'd help your pallbearers. I don't know what they'll do. But all I'm telling you is, it don't matter about that body, but what's going to happen is those disembodied souls and spirits are going to get a head start and God's going to put together every bit of that body that's needed to be fit for heaven. He's got to change it anyway. Did you hear that? He's got to change it. It ain't this body I'm in right now, it's going to have a change. Your body's, the body you're living in right now, it's going to be changed. And it's going to happen in an instant. Quicker than a blink of an eye. Those disembodied souls and spirits are going to come back to a body, going to be reunited. Listen, going to be reunited in a body fit for heaven. We who are on this earth are going to be changed. Now, the rapture. Wouldn't that be an interesting thing to contemplate and ponder just for a moment? Because if it were to happen right now, what would be left behind? What would be piled up in your pew right there? Well, we got clothes, false teeth, toupees. What else going to be left there piled up? Say again, glasses, hearing aids. Maybe we ought to stop right there. That's enough, inf that's enough information because I, I, I'm suspecting there's, there may be other things that will be piled up right there. But it'll all be left. Now, you're going to be changed if the rapture were to take place right now. We'd be following those who have now that body already fit for heaven. We're going to be changed. And we're going to listen to this. This is one of the best parts of this whole thing to dream about. We're going to be reunited. Go to the next point. A sure event, an instant event, a separating event. Now, this, is, this gets where I, I think some of the some of the things I ponder and think about. This, this event's going to separate. You've heard uh, the, Jesus taught about the wheat and the tares. There's a difference. He taught about sheep and goats. There's a difference. He taught about the saved and the lost. So I'm going to tell you right now, out of this room, if the event of the rapture were to take place right now, the only folks going on the flight, the only people in this room that are going to say goodbye, world, goodbye, are those who are saved. Can't guarantee it won't be before the end of this service that it, that, that takes place. That's how urgent this message is. That's how important this message is to every heart because there could be somebody in this room that's not ready. I never will forget sitting over here was Brian Bosworth, his wife. Morgan was with him. And you remember that that's about the last time I really preached on this subject. And that was like 2013. Now, I've, I've referenced it or I've, I've preached it, but uh, uh, we, we, we hit on it. But a full message on the rapture was back then. And uh, are you ready? I preached a message on are you ready? You remember that if you were here. But the 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 whole idea of this message is to get people ready for the rapture. I talked with a young lady. I talked with a young lady. Uh, Barb, she serves you guys down there at uh, Boomerang. 
I asked her this question in front of Mike Macy, didn't I? I said, are you saved? And she looked straight at me. She said, no. Well, I'm telling you what, I always, I, I, want, I want to be ready just like you are to give that information. I took a track. I made sure that she had a track. I, she was busy. I said, call me. I, I wrote my phone number, my cell number on there. I said, Oh, but she had she she gets off on Wednesday night, and she said she'd be here Wednesday night. I pray she will be. And she has two children, and she's just she she needs to get ready. I, I that that's why we're here. Got a Brad Parr. Hey Brad, happy birthday. Did you know it's his birthday? He's been on this earth 51 years today. Give him a hand. reason why Brad has gotten caught, you just kind of got caught up in this idea of going over to the prisons, haven't you? He goes over there and men are, men are getting saved. I, it, it's infectious. You kind of like doing it. And I, I'm telling you, it's just one of those things. I appreciate him about that. And uh, he's willing to go. And we're all learning as we go. Feel as you go type deal, right? But it's important. Every, every soul counts. That's what I want to tell you. Um, you know, so I'm just telling you, here we are. Are you ready? If the rapture were to take place right now, would your clothes be piled up in that pew? Or would you be here looking around and seeing the others that are left here with you? And you're knowing right now because the preacher's preaching and you're looking at the Word of God. You know it's a separating event. If the rapture were to take place, the commencement of the, of the tribulation clock would begin for seven years. And you, sir, you, ma'am, are going to be going through the tribulation period. Now, I'm going to give everybody in this room permission right now. You can have everything that's left in this room. Y'all can just, everybody can just have anything that's left. I'm talking about, does everybody agree? Can we vote on that? Anybody that's left can have your money? can have your bill folded, and if, if you can wear their clothes or give them to somebody, that's fine. But you're going to be the most unfortunate person to be left behind. And I say that tongue-in-cheek, but it's a fact. It is a fact. I wouldn't doubt that if that event were to take place right now, you might run out of this room screaming and running. You better get ready. Time's too short. And then fourthly, it's an irreversible event. You can't change it once it's done. This cannot be reversed. I'm just glad I'm ready. Glad I'm ready for the flight. You can get ready today. That's why we're here. That's why we open the doors. That's why we have this moment. Would you stand to your feet, please? Would you bow your heads and just, however the Lord's dealing in your heart right now. I, I wouldn't want anybody to go out of this room not ready, and you, you can get ready today by a prayer from your heart to His. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> it's that easy. He said, call on me. Ask me. And when you call and when you ask, that's just a prayer. We'll be glad. we got workers standing right down here that have already made that choice about Jesus and are glad to share with you faith in Christ. They're here now. They're, they're waiting for you to just take that step of faith and they'll talk with you. They'll, they'll lead you in that prayer for salvation. What would you want to do? Dave, would you sing, please? And, God's dealing in your heart right now, come. Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want Thee forever to live in my soul. Break down every idol, cast out every foe. 
Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than snow, yes, whiter than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Lord Jesus, look down from your throne in the skies and help me to make a complete sacrifice. I give up myself and whatever I know, now wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Whiter than whiter snow. than snow. Yes, whiter, whiter than, snow. than snow. Now wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Thank you. You may be seated. Wow, Brock Brock Barr comes today to present himself as a candidate for baptism, and uh, he has a fan club here. <laughs> His grandmas and grandpas on both sides and mom and dad. We're so glad they're here today and to witness Brock's step of following the Lord and believers' baptism. Brock, come up here and stand with me. Got saved at D now. Hey, amen. Yeah. Those willing to receive him in the membership of this church by baptism, uplift your right hand, good hearty, amen. amen. We'll take care of this and just go right through that door, mom and dad, help him and We'll, I'll follow you up. Dave, you'll take care of this. Hey, Dave. Hey, would y'all mind if we end the service after we baptize with guess what? Goodbye, world. Goodbye. How do you like that? Was there somebody else to be baptized? Uh, if, uh, we were contacted about somebody else and told them to come forward, Just but I guess sure. not. No, Just making sure. Just making sure. Okay. All right, sing with us, Shall We Gather at the River. Shall we gather at the river Where bright angels' feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. On the margin of the river, washing up in silver spring, we will talk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with <coughs> that humbled by the throne of God. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. <coughs> Grace. <coughs> yes, we'll gather at the river The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river That flows by the throne of God At the smiling of the river Mirror of the silver's face Saints whom death will never sever Lift their songs of saving grace <coughs> The beautiful, the beautiful river Gather with the saints at the river That flow by the throne of God
stand if you would, and we're going to sing this song, and then we'll be dismissed. I've told all my troubles goodbye, goodbye to each tear and each sigh. This world where I roam cannot be my home. I'm bound for that land in the sky. I walk and I talk with my Lord. I feast every day on His Word. Heaven is near and I can't stay here. Goodbye world, goodbye. Now don't you weep for me when I'm gone. Cause I won't have to leave here alone. And when I hear that last trumpet, sing it out now. My feet won't stay on the ground. I'm going to rise with a shout, going to fly. I'm going to ride with my Lord through the sky. Heaven is near and I can't stay here. Goodbye, world, goodbye. Amen. Thank you. You are dismissed.